xenophobic attacks against Nigerians and other Africans by South Africans is becoming a common occurrence year in, year out. But this year's attack took a more gruesome and worrisome dimension when lives and properties of these Africans were wasted without a check by the South African police who watch as these wicked acts were committed against defenseless Africans. House notes that between the year 2000 and March 20, 2008, at least 67 Nigerian citizens living outside the country died in what were identified as xenophobic attacks in the Republic of South Africa alone. In 2015, there was also a nationwide spike in xenophobic attacks against Nigerian citizens and other immigrant communities living in South Africa. These had been prompted a number of foreign governments to bring home their citizens living in South Africa. Also notes that in the last three years, figures from civil society groups in South Africa and from members of the Nigerian community living in the country indicates about 127 citizens have fallen prey to xenophobic attacks and extrajudicial killings carried out by the South African Police Service. Federal lawmakers in the Green Chamber upon resumption expressed amazement to the barbaric action and the perceived role played by the South African government. They blame what looked like the nonchalant attitude of the South African government to attacks and the justification offered by the South Africans. When the uh, Deputy Commissioner, whoever in South Africa, did not seem to like condemn what their citizens were doing. Because I heard him say, do we allow our do we allow our country to be taken over by foreigners? The foreigners are taking over everywhere and, and all that. So that means that there are some hidden issues that they are not telling us. Also, that the thieves and these killers are powerful than the government because the police in South Africa could not control these activities or this event for days. We need to know why. If there's a connivance to hurt Nigerians and other African nations there, we need to know. This lawmaker is concerned that the action by the South African government only re-emphasized the call for respect of treaties and agreement by African governments. It's very, very bad. It's on African. Africans, we are known to be our brother's keepers, we don't even have border lines. We regard ourselves as one country. But for people to decide after helping them during the apartheid regime and to come forth to say that uh, we are taking over jobs, and I don't know which jobs they are talking about. Mr. Speaker, I must stay on record. That there are the Speaker in his ruling promised to this face house. directly with the President and particularly the Minister of Foreign Affairs because of an issue that is so Minister important. Geoffrey Onyema who has consistently failed to show up whenever he's invited by the House to address national issues such as xenophobic attacks. Respond. I believe we are one government, and I believe we're here to serve the interests of Nigerians. I want to use this, this platform to send a direct appeal to the minister and all ministers for that matter that we need to respect the invitation that comes from this house and particularly the minister of foreign affairs because of an issue that is so important i would want to refer to refer him to the provisions of the constitution particularly sections 88 and 89 and that is all I have to say on that matter. To refer him to the provisions of section 68 and section, section 88 and section 89. And I will be discussing further with Mr. President on this issue. The House of Representatives, however, mandated its committees on foreign affairs, treaties and diaspora to interface with the government with a view to finding a lasting solution to the crisis. Sandra Guana, TVN News.